Hello dear children, in a previous class of force chapter, we discussed in detail about the impact of force, means what happens when force acts on the object and even we discussed about the units of force also. There especially we discussed dear children, what happens when force acts on non-rigid body and we discussed what happens when force acts on a rigid body. Of course, that under this rigid body, we discussed two cases, what happens when a rigid body is free to move whereas when a rigid body is pivoted and after that we discuss about moment of force and the factors affecting the moment of force and when a moment of force can be minimum when a moment of force can be a maximum so in today's session dear children we are going to cover very 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 uh, four important points in this session what are those first we'll discuss moments of force examples example that is applications also then we discuss about the couple and examples then we'll be discussing about equilibrium of bodies and finally we'll discuss about principle of moments so let us start with this moments of force actually what are the example Digital. so before going to what uh, discuss about the examples let us recall what actual moment of force i mean what is its mathematical formula Digital, moment of force is also called a torque which is equal to force into perpendicular distance very 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 important perpendicular distance from its axis of rotation axis of rotation but the children for a given for a given moment of force for a given moment of force that is for a constant tau if tau is a constant what happens these children we know that here f into perpendicular distance so both are constant for a given moment of force for a constant moment of force this product should be con what are equal to that that is a constant only so from this we can write here f is inversely proportional to the perpendicular distance children this is very 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 important conclusion which means what each children more the perpendicular distance more the perpendicular distance less is the force required to rotate the body which is pivoted whereas if perpendicular distance is less then more is the force required to rotate that particular body which is a pivoted so this is actually a, what we can say it's a key point in order to understand the applications of moments of force Achadi, children. so before going to discuss that here okay the first one very 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 important thing is that very very important thing is that is it possible to change the direction of rotation direction of rotation of a body without changing the direction of force children very very important this point even examination point also very very important so let us make a picture in order to understand in a better way children let us take here is so in this example decision for suppose let us say this is a point where for suppose exactly uh, f is equal to 10 newton force acting 10 newton force acting so then what will happen in which direction it rotates obviously it is rotated in anti-clockwise direction obviously it is rotated in anti-clockwise like this it is rotated in anti-clockwise direction it is rotated in anti-clockwise direction anti-clockwise direction but each one, the point is what what is it without changing the direction so in which direction it is applying it is applied so in this direction it is applied it is applied so what i am now going to say is that so what are the force which is acting at this point a okay now if it is shifted parallel to itself shifted to this point b let us say it is a point b let us say this is a point where the 10 newton force is acting you should try to understand this is shifted to parallel to itself but do you think that its direction is changed no not at all your force direction is not changed but at this point if force acts at a point b the same 10 newton force in the same direction then what will happen here body is rotated in a clockwise direction in this case now body is rotated in a clockwise direction so here clockwise moment of force will be there here anti clockwise moments of force so addition what can we say finally yes it is possible so without changing the direction of force which is acting on the body which is pivoted we can change the direction of rotation means you can if you want you can make it to rotate in a clockwise direction if you want even you can rotate you can make it to rotate in a anti-clockwise direction why means how what is the reason by changing the point of application of force the answer is by changing the point of application of force so before it was acting at a point a but in this case it is acting at a point b so in this is how actually we can change the direction of rotation of the body by changing the but not but not changing the direction of force but by changing the 
point of application of force. Okay, you should just copy it. So this is how actually we can understand. Fine. Now let us see the second one. It's very very important. And dear children, if you can uh, look at the spanner, so spanner is always brought with a longer handle. Look at here. So here, yeah, here we have two spanners but different lengths. Difference in look at here. So which one we will prefer and why do we prefer? Let us say. So this can be that nut which to be tightened or uh, uh, rotated. Let us say this one, and here also. So the nut which is. to be tight in a rotated direction so this is going to be pivoted point so this is going to be pivot so in general we will in order to tighten or loosen that nut we will apply force at this end only so let us say here force f that is let us say for example 10 newton we are applying 10 newton we are applying so whereas here the force let us say same 10 newton force is acting example i am saying example just i am saying example Just so same Newton, but in which case it's very easy to uh, what we can say turn that nut, and in which case it's a very very uh, tough. I can say that, and which one do we prefer, and why do we prefer? We'll discuss. So, dear children, if you can look at here, the perpendicular distance is R one. Okay, na. So let us not take ten Newton force again. There will be confusion. Okay, let us say here F one force acting, and here is F two force acting. Such way that here uh, the perpendicular distance let us say R two, dear children. R two, and we already we know that here perpendicular distance and force both are inversely proportional to each other. Means more the perpendicular distance, less be the force they required. So in these two cases, if you can observe the children, as R one is greater than R two, R one is greater than the R two. Obviously, F one is less than F two. Means to produce same moment of force to produce means for a given same moment of force dear children more the perpendicular distance less the force is required so now you tell in which case in which case dear children you think that we need to apply the less amount of force so obviously in first case only why because the perpendicular distance is more so this is the reason why spanner is provided with a long handle actually in exam they will ask you the question spanner is provided with a long handle give a reason what is the reason so for a given same moment of force to produce same moment of force for a given same moment of force perpendicular distance is inversely proportional to the force that is more the perpendicular distance less the force is required as a spanner is provided with a long handle perpendicular distance will become more as a perpendicular distance will become more so force is force required will be less only so this is how why actually spanner is provided with a long handle okay dear children five now in a, of course uh, this is a case actual where we will apply, where we will observe in a mechanic shop but every time dear children do you think that in order to ob observe this case we need to go to the mechanic shop only uh, whether force is more or perpendicular distance is not that even in our house also we can see where we can see that is specially door whenever you are closing the door whenever we are opening the door dear children actually this is a concept involved this is a concept involved so let me tell you here third example actually let us say dear children here is door let us say so here is door of course that door what we can the support is not door and uh, this is going to be let us say door here is door and uh, here is hinges where it is uh, uh, pivoted i can say hinges the hinges dear children if you can observe the door if you can notice the door where that handle is provided dear children the handle is provided at the end only at the end only here provided end only not here did you notice uh, what uh, any time or anywhere for any door uh, the handle is provided at this uh, what we can say midpoint is not that always the handle is provided at the end at the end of the door only why why it should be provided at the end of the door to open and to what close so why it is easy in that case and let us see dear children for suppose let us think it is the point a where handle is provided at the end at the point b handle is provided between let us say here so in first case the perpendicular distance will be r1 whereas in the second case the perpendicular distance will be r2 it's very 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 simple now now you can understand here you can so as r1 is greater than r2 so let us say here we are applying force f1 
here we are applying force f2 either to open it or to close it whatever it may be then as r1 is greater than r2 d children obviously f1 is less than f2 so in which case we feel easy or in which case we need to apply only less amount of force either to open the door or to close the door each length so when handle is provided at the end of this door so that is the reason why handle is provided at the end of the door acha each children sometimes we make it one down so just you can try this this is a hinge right just try to apply the force here can you first of all open the door or close the door by applying the force at a hinge not at all it's not possible means there is infinite amount of force required why because r is zero at a hinge you are applying the force what is the perpendicular distance perpendicular distance will be zero as a perpendicular distance will be zero to each length what will happen if it is zero if it is zero then moment of force also will be zero only so there is no turning effect at all only so dear children these are the important example under this moment of force okay dear children just copy this door example also yeah now we will discuss uh the next uh, concept after this moment of force is a couple so what is a couple and example it's very simple dechin just we are going to learn what is a couple what is the effect of couple and what its example let us see here couple 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 it's a couple dechin two equal forces two equal forces two equal forces here question is that the two equal forces which are acting on the body can they produce any two equal forces any two equal forces which are acting uh, for example on the body which is pivoted so can they produce a coupled each children let us see whether they can produce or they cannot produce and what is the condition in which case you can say that the, the two equal forces which are acting on the body form couple let us see for suppose the children so let us take here is uh, let us take here is a uh, or else what can we say here is a body which is pivoted at this point pivoted at a point of try to understand pivoted at this point such as the dh line here a force of 10 newton is acting like this whereas here also force of 10 newton is acting 10 newton. let us take is example 1 example one let us take whereas second case so here is uh, yeah in this case now let us take a vertical this one it is a pivoted still it is a pivoted at this point it is a pivoted so here uh, the force now in this direction is acting let us say 10 newton force here also 10 newton force acting let us say it's f 10 newton force acting this is the second example so whereas let us take uh, one more example one more example let us take here is so same body pivoted at this point only pivoted so here uh, let us say f is equal to tenator force acting and here also f is equal to tenator force acting but these children just try to observe these examples in the first case both are equal forces both equal forces here equal force are acting on the body at different points here also both force are acting at different points only but dear children in these three cases here the two force which are acting they do not form couple here they do not produce couple they do not produce couple actually dear children what is the effect of couple dear children so the result of couple is rotation body must be rotated the pivoted body must be rotated that is actually the result that is a result of the couple dear children but in this case do you think that in these three cases body is rotated no chance at all but in which case then we can say that two forces which are acting on the body which pivoted form couple so in these three cases dear children two equal forces only two equal forces only. that's what i am saying dear children if the two forces if they are equal and acting on the body you cannot say that they form couple so particular some conditions are there what is that condition so before going to see that condition dear children look at here it's very very important so this f for f force is there in no? a first force so its line of action of force is like this whereas here also line of action of force is same only and its line of action of force is same only whereas here line of action of force is not same but in the same direction so it should not be like that so now let us see in which case the two equal forces acting on the body said to form couple 
look at here the children so it's very simple very very simple so here is let us take here is a body which is pivoted at this point pivoted at this point such a way that the children here force f is acting at a point a let us say whereas at a point b here one more force same force f is acting now what will happen just you think now just imagine the situation so the force which is acting at a point b it will try to rotate it in anti clockwise direction sorry clockwise direction whereas the force f which is acting at a point a will try to rotate in anti clockwise direction so in result what will happen body is rotated literally in this case these two forces set to form couple so what actually condition is the children so look at here then that two forces set to form set to form actually couple so the children two equal forces that's what we are represent we are not representing with f1 and f2 we are representing with f and f only which means what to say that both are equal in magnitude so two equal and opposite forces two equal and opposite forces which are not acting along the same line of action which are not acting along the same line of action said to form couple decision then what is the result of couple decision so result of couple is rotation result of couple is rotation so whenever there is a couple decision there will be a rotation okay fine now let us see what are the examples decision in our daily life where we can observe this couple Initially, you know, in an electromagnetism chapter, we are going to discuss how actual electric motor can work. Actually, so in that actual electric motor, you know, what happens? You know, couple will be acting on that current carrying rectangular copper coil, so that only our fan. If you, uh, the best example, you know, why motor is rotated just because of couple only. So not only that, children. So whenever we are trying to tighten the what uh, cap of that water bottle, or whenever we are trying to loosen the Uh, what we can say uh, that cap of the water bottle with two fingers will apply force at two different points so there also the cap is rotated even whenever we are opening the lock whenever we are closing the lock especially the key will be there so there also the turning of that key the turning of that key is a best example for couple even dear children whenever you are you know what we can say uh, uh, going in a car uh, what we can say bus or that steering will be there you know at two different points you know will be applying the force so which causes the rotation which causes the rotation even dear children when you go for a mechanic shop the wrench will be there with that only either will tighten the nuts or loosen the nuts so there also what will happen rotation will be there so it's very very important whenever there is a rotation there will be a couple that's it so whenever there is a couple there will be a rotation so that is actually a story of couple so then how to calculate the couple let us see the children so how to calculate the couple what is the couple formula and what are its units we will discuss now so in this case only children look at here so let us say the perpendicular distance between these two forces let it be d let it be d so dear children the force which is acting at a point a it will produce what type of moment of force clockwise moment of force so at a point a so that will be tau 1 is equal to it is f1 into oa f1 into oa whereas the force which is acting at a point b also produces moment of force how to calculate it it will be f2 into ob f2 into ob then what is the total moment of force that is what is a couple how to calculate the couple look at here so couple can be calculated by tau 1 plus tau 2 so tau 1 is what children f1 into oa whereas plus tau 2 is f2 into ob we know that f1 and f2 both are equal both equal forces actually we, so f1 will be f only f2 will be f only don't get confused so this is going to be f into oa plus f into ob only now here you can take f as a common so then oa plus ob but dear children oa plus ob is what the perpendicular distance this is called actually couple arm d oa plus ob is a d so this we can write f into d so this what actually couple is equal to children very 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 important so couple is equal to either a force 
Why we are taking either of those decision? Because their magnitudes are same. So, couple is equal to either of force into couple arm. This D is called actually couple arm. So, this is how actually we can calculate. Just copy it. Now, we will see the units of couple D children. Units of couple. So, let us see its SI units D children. So, we know that force is measured in Newton SI system. Distance is measured in meter. So, here SI units are Newton meter and whereas CJ's units are it is dyne centimeter. Actually, the very 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 important thing is that the units of moment of force that is a torque and the units of couple both are same that is Newton meter in SI system dyne centimeter in a CJ system and we all, we all know that 1 Newton meter is equal to 10 to the power of 7 dyne centimeter. Actually, it is very 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 important relation. And as like uh, moment of force, couple also vector quantity, couple also vector quantity, we can calculate clockwise or anticlockwise. Okay, children. So, this is what actually couple, very, very important, dear children. Two equal forces, two equal and opposite forces, which are acting on the same body, two different points, but not along the same line of action of force produces couple and what is the result of couple the result of couple is the rotation of the body okay children just copy this units so let uh, now we will discuss the equilibrium of bodies so children this is a very very important concept and this concept means this is the last concept in this unit so under this concept what are we going to learn first uh, we will discuss when a bodies are said to be in equilibrium and what are the conditions of equilibrium and types of equilibrium there we will be discussing about a static equilibrium dynamic equilibrium and we will be discussing a few examples Achha, before uh, going to what a start uh, topic in depth uh, before going to discuss the topic in depth dear children just think once about the uh, impact of force on the objects what happens when force acts on the bodies so in a previous lecture which we discussed that when force acts on the body what happens that force may change the shape of an object that force may change the direction of an object, even that force can change the dimension of an object also. But here one important thing is that only one single force is acting on the body, the body might be at rest or body might be in motion. What happens? Just you think. So only one force is acting, then definitely what will happen? That particular force which is acting on the body will change the either what a state of rest of the body or state of motion. Means if a body is at rest, that is brought into the motion. Whereas if a body is in motion, that is stopped by this force. So that is a very clear if single force is acting. But just think about the situation where more than one force is acting. At, uh, I mean, uh, might be two forces, three forces, four forces. So what happens in that case? Can you say that definitely uh, body position will be changed? So we are not sure that. Why? Because when more than one force, that is a two force or three force are acting on a body, we need to talk about, we must talk about the net force acting on the body. If I mean, there are two cases we have. What happens if net force acting on the body is zero? And whereas what happens if net force acting on the body is not zero? That we will see now. For that, to understand this in a better manner, children, let us take a small example. So, here is on horizontal surface, dear children. Here, one object is placed. One object is placed. Now, my question is that, do you think that a force is acting on this body? But generally, what we think, we think, no, no force is acting. Why? Because uh, we already, what are habituated to think like a force acting on the body means, body should change its position like that. But we habituated. But the thing is that, dear children, here if you can see the uh, observe the body which is placed on the horizontal surface on this body here its weight is acting downward direction let us say it's a w is acting vertically downward direction whereas normal reaction normal reaction is acting upward direction for suppose if this weight is 10 newtons example i am saying downward direction and normal reaction also will be 10 newton only 10 Newton only means if you can say here F1 is let us say that is a W it will be 10 Newton whereas F2 let us take it as a normal reaction or a normal force it is also 10 Newton only 
But these children, do you are, don't you think that both are in opposite direction? Means either force is opposite. You can take. Means either you you can take this as a minus or this as a minus. Either of one you can take. Let it be. This will be minus. Now let us find out the what algebraic some of the forces which are acting on this body. That is, let us find out the net force acting on the body. So net force acting on this body is you can calculate like this F1 plus F2. So this can be 10 plus of minus 10. So this will be 0. So now what is happening though two forces are acting on the body, two forces are acting on the body, no doubt about it. But what is the algebraic sum? What is the net force acting on the body? So the net force acting on this body is 0. Then what happens, you know, dear children? So as a net force acting on the body is 0, then there won't be any impact on this body. So what happens? The body is not shifted. The body is not moved. The body is not displaced. Means before it was at rest only. Now also it will continue its state of rest only. Now let us take one more example. This is example 1 to understand this concept. Now let us move to the one more example. So let us take here is again horizontal surface. But by this time we are not going to take the object which is at rest. Let us take the object which is in motion. It is a special case, let us say, you know, special case, let us say day children. So, uh, what I mean to say, here is one car. Let us take here is a car acting on this body. Okay. Yes. Here is car, let us take. So, it is, this car is covering, let us say, 60 kilometers in every hour. 60 kilometers means the car is moving with uniform velocity. If it is going along a straight line path, if it is going along a straight line path, we can say that a car is going with a uniform velocity. It is 60 hour, what uh, 60 kilometers, sorry, 60 kilometers per hour, let us say. Means body is going with a uniform velocity. But once let us think about the case, don't you think that some forces are acting on this car? Obviously, the car weight will be acting downwards the car waiting acting will downward direction whereas normal reaction so due to this tire let us say here n1 is acting upwards and here n2 will be acting upwards Achha, dear children, some students they will think that they will take only one normal here normal force but here very very important thing is that dear children so whenever there will be a contact definitely there will be normal force will be acting upwards so here two contacts are there that's what we are taking n1 and n2 so two normal force are acting is very very important and don't you think that there will be a friction acting in opposite direction obviously so here how many forces are acting now in this case obviously if you can take this normal force as a single force okay normal force and a weight and f but still the car is going with uniform velocity means now so when it is possible digital when it is possible so it is possible when some of these let us calculate the f net f net should be that is w plus n1 plus n2 plus f so this should be zero then only what will happen dear children the body which is going with the uniform velocity will continue its uniform motion this is a second example let us take a one more example let us take a one more example so dear children here is uh, let us take a metal bar iron bar the iron bar so it is like a, you know a zero and let us take it is 100 centimeters that is it is a one meter bar it is it is a pivoted at a certain point it is a pivoted at a certain point means not exactly midway it is not exactly pivoted at a midpoint now dear children just think that here f1 force acting like this at a distance r1 r1 just example only dear children and here is one more force f2 is acting at a distance r2 at a distance r2 and here it is very 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 important obviously here f1 is not at all equal to f2 why the perpendicular distance is different as a perpendicular distance is different obviously the forces f1 and f2 also different only the children this force will try to make it to rotate in a anti-clockwise direction 
whereas this force will try to make it rotate in a clockwise direction clockwise direction clockwise direction but dear children let us take a situation of what we can say this meter rule let us say this meter rule is neither rotating clockwise direction nor rotating anti clockwise direction anti clockwise direction which means for dear children which means the clockwise moment of force f2 into r2 is equal to f1 into r1 f1 into r1 so this is tau1 that is moment of force let us say tau2 not a problem and this will be tau1 so which means what anti clockwise moment of force equal to clockwise moment of force so or else we can say that the algebraic sum of the moments of force that is tau1 plus tau2 is zero is zero so then what will happen it neither what are rotated neither in a clockwise direction nor in a anti clockwise direction now dear children just try to observe these three examples just try to observe very very what in depth just think and try to observe here two forces are acting here let us say 1 2 3 4 can be here the example which we have taken of course might be more than two it is not compulsory just for the sake of our convenience strictly our convenience to understand the concept in a best manner just we selected these examples dear children okay fine so here clockwise moment of force and here is anti clockwise moment of force acting but if you can observe one common thing is there what is that here here net force acting on the zero here also net force are acting on the zero and here also net moment of force is zero only mean dear children in these three cases we can say that these three objects are in equilibrium these three objects are in equilibrium so how to define equilibrium when we can say that the body is in equilibrium it's a very very simple dear children so here when number of forces are acting on the body produces no change either in state of rest or state of motion then the bodies are said to be in equilibrium chill and i repeat once so in this case two forces are acting on the body produces no change in state of rest okay whereas here this mean 1 2 3 4 forces are acting on this body but produces no change in its what a state of uniform motion that's what these bodies are said to be in equilibrium so let me repeat once again dear children when a number of forces acting on a body produces no change either in state of rest or state of uniform motion then we can say that bodies are said to be in equilibrium okay fine just copy these examples so now we will discuss the conditions for equilibrium and after that we will discuss the uh, types of equilibrium so let us see the conditions dear children examination point of view this is very 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 important so there are two conditions so with examples let us uh, let us learn of course already we discussed that examples those examples will again we are going to take in order to understand the conditions so first condition dear children uh, what i mean to say that let us take here is here is an object such a way that here weight is acting downward direction and here normal reaction is acting upward direction so in this case the net force is zero f net is zero f net is zero so then we can say that this body is in equilibrium so then what condition we can make from this example dear so the number of forces acting on the body should be zero i think i mean the sum the sum of the forces the sum of the forces that is the algebraic sum of the forces acting on the body should be zero that is the first condition let us write here should be equal to zero should be equal to zero so in a first condition we will talk about the forces we are not going to talk about the moment of force just we will talk about the force so the resultant that is the algebraic sum the net force the resultant of all force acting on the body should be equal to zero that is the first condition so to understand this uh, this condition just think about this example then you can of course like this examples so many you will get okay fine now second condition dear children look at here so here let us take one uh, what we can say here so let us take here is meter rule again let us take a meter rule 
it is a pi voted at this point pi voted so let us be zero it is a hundred centimeters so zero and let us say this point is a p p d chillet and at this end the force f1 is acting uh, at a perpendicular r1 and here one more force let us say f2 is acting at a perpendicular distance r2 still this meter rule is not equilibrium let us just take a case and uh, one more force let us say here f3 is acting from let us perpendicular r3 so here in this case this is a special case which we are taking where f1 and f2 and f3 different forces are acting at different points then finally these three forces keep this a meter rule in equilibrium but try to understand each other here f1 will try to rotate this in a anti clockwise direction means anti clockwise moment of force it produces whereas f3 will produce clockwise moment of force whereas f2 will also will produce clockwise moment of force clockwise moment of force so let us calculate first clockwise moment of force clockwise moment of force each other so clockwise moment of force will be f2 into r2 okay and f3 into r3 so these two will produce clockwise moment of force whereas anti clockwise moment of force anti clockwise moment of force just f1 will produce anti clockwise moment of force then how can we calculate uh, f1 into r1 f1 into r1 but what happens dear children clockwise moment of force the sum of this clockwise moments of force are equal to this anti clockwise moment of force then this meter rule is in equilibrium is in equilibrium so that is actually what should happen in order to keep the this meter rule in equilibrium means here uh, sum of sum of clockwise moments of force should be equal to sum of anti clockwise moment of force sum of anti clockwise moments of force that is in the according to this example let us write here that is f2 into r2 plus f3 into r3 is equal to f1 into r1 f1 into r1 so this we can represent with it is a tau2 plus tau3 is equal to tau1 so which means what here tau1 minus tau2 minus tau3 is equal to 0 you can take t2 t3 or tau2 tau3 right side or else you can get this tau1 left side also it's not a matter means if you can see the algebraic sum means here dear children the sum of this all that should be 0 should be 0 so this is the second condition so what is the second condition dear children so here the sum of the clockwise moments of forces must be equal to the sum of the anti clockwise moments of force or we can say like this also what can you say here so about this point of rotation day children about this point of rotation the clockwise moments of force must be equal to the anti clockwise moments of force or the algebraic sum of the moments of force the algebraic sum of the moments of moments of all forces acting on the body must be zero must be zero so what is the first condition day children the resultant of all force acting on the body should be equal to zero that is the first condition to be in equilibrium okay whereas what is second condition dear children so about this uh, point of rotation about this point of rotation sum of the clockwise moments of force must be equal to the sum of the anti clockwise moments of force or else the algebraic sum of the moments of all the forces about this point of rotation must be zero so these are the two conditions for equilibrium okay dear children just copy it so this is a uh, this is how actually we can understand and in examination is a direct question they will ask us to write the conditions for a equilibrium okay dear children fine copy it just copy it fine now we will discuss about the types of equilibrium and the examples types of equilibrium and exam and dear children here in examination you know they'll be giving example they'll give an example they'll ask you uh, which comes under what type of equilibrium actually what type of equilibrium they'll be talking okay now so here equilibrium you know there are two types of equivalent dear children let us write here only first one is static equilibrium static equilibrium static 
equilibrium whereas second one is let us write here dynamic equilibrium dynamic equilibrium dynamic equilibrium yeah so first of all static means what here static itself is a rest static itself is a rest whereas dynamic means what actually of course before going to discuss let us see actual what is the meaning of the words okay so dynamic means the children it is a motion this is very very important dynamo which is in motion okay fine so first let us see what is a static equilibrium so first let us take up an example you have to understand this so digital let us take example so before we have taken same example same example a book lying on a table a book lying on a table so here what is happening here here weight is book weight is acting downward direction and let us say it is a book it is a book placed on a table or a horizontal surface and here normal reaction is acting upward direction and do you think that uh, these two forces which are acting on this book will change its state of rest obviously no we can say that no so here what is happening here when number of forces acting on this body do not change its state of rest then this book is said to be in static equilibrium so i repeat once what is a static equilibrium when number of forces are acting on the body do not change its state of rest previously it was in state of rest after acting though these two forces are acting uh, what on this book still the book is continuing its state of rest then we can say that this book is said to be in static equilibrium static equilibrium let us take a one more example teach you so example 1 so let us take a one more example this is very 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 important very very important case balance you know beam balance here is beam balance so that you can see uh, when you go to shop especially you know vegetable market okay so it will be beam balance and like this it will be here is a left pan and here is right pan and not to put exactly it is in between only so for, it is you know for example it is a 0.5 meters just example i am saying this also will be 0.5 meters only and such is the dear children here uh, 50 newtons weight is placed whereas here also Uh, 50 newtons weight. I am talking about weight. Weight is placed now. Now you tell me whether it will rotate in a anti-clockwise direction or clockwise direction? Not at all, dear children. This beam, especially I am talking about this beam, children. This beam I am talking. I am talking about this beam of this balance, beam of this physical balance. I am talking, dear children. Beam balance, beam of this balance. I am talking here. So here, here on what a 50 newton force acting, which produces. anti clockwise moment of force whereas this also produces clockwise moment of force dear children but but as this two are equal this clockwise moment of force 15 into 0.5 15 into 0.5 so both will be equal but in opposite direction so the algebraic sum is zero in this condition in this condition this beam is said to be in static equilibrium before it was rest like this only now it is right rotating neither clockwise nor anti clockwise so it is at equilibrium that is the static equilibrium so very very well. static means what dear children the number of forces which are acting on the body but still the body should be at state of rest only it should not change its state of rest then we can say that the body is in static equilibrium so this what actually static equilibrium and the example okay now come to the dynamic equilibrium dear children aba acha and dear children here dynamic means what actually motion then immediately we will get a one doubt sir bodies can go along a straight line path and even they will go along a circular path also then which one we should take dear children we should take a both actually the motion it might be along a straight line path or the motion might be in a circular path also we will take a two examples so that we will understand in a better way so to understand this dear as i said the dynamic means what actually motion means the number though the number of force acting on the body they do not change its state of uniform motion means as i said that for example a car is going with a 50 km per hour only 50 km per hour over here 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 with the same velocity is going though the number of force acting in the body when a number of force acting in the body but still the car is going along a straight line path with a uniform velocity 
then you can say that that car is in dynamic equilibrium that car is said to be in a dynamic equilibrium so let us see one example let us see one example as i said the car example only or else you can take any ball you know or else better day children in a better way you know anyhow all the car example which we discuss the first example so let us take here is a one uh, water drop rain drop not water drop means again you will get confused it is a rain drop day children it's a very very important so when a rain when a rain drop is reaching you know day children it's very very important when a rain drop is reaching the earth's surface it moves with a uniform velocity means there won't be any change in its velocity but here don't you think that few forces are acting on this uh, rain drop let us see what are the forces which are acting on this rain drop so obviously it its weight will be acting down one direction no doubt about it so due to the force of gravity dear children that rain drop is pulled by the earth so that is what actually we can call as a weight and here in a upward direction dear children up thrust force of buoyancy will be acting force of buoyancy at the same time dear children the viscous forces as a rain drop is passing or moving traveling through the air and air is a fluid so obviously there will be air friction that only we can call it as a viscous viscous force viscous force okay so here how many forces are acting dear children three forces are acting on this rain drop weight is acting down what direction this buoyant force that is up thrust and viscous force both are acting upward direction but still there is no change in its uniform motion then this rain drop is said to be in dynamic equilibrium okay fine now let us take a one more example so the best example for example you know let us take a one uh, aeroplane acha <laughs> is it a aeroplane looking like a dolphin huh? okay what it mean let us think it is a aeroplane dear children so when a aeroplane is going at a certain height at a constant height at a constant height now during take off something like that so aeroplane is going at a constant height with a uniform velocity like this zoom it is going means at a constant height at a constant height it is going dear children so in that case dear children here you know dynamic lift will be acting upward direction dynamic lift dynamic lift is acting upward direction whereas its weight is acting downward direction its weight is acting downward direction but still the aeroplane is moving with a uniform velocity so the number of forces are acting on this what we can say aeroplane they are not changing its uniform motion then you can say that this aeroplane is in dynamic equilibrium acha dear children this two examples if you can observe I, of course it is falling like this it is going horizontally it is vertically it is horizontally but what it may be both are going like a straight line path right one is zoom like that is coming rain drop whereas aeroplane is zoom it is going like this but both are going like a straight line path that is a linear motion only but dynamic equilibrium means it is not compulsory that the body should go like a straight line path only let us take one more example dear children this is the best example best example look at here we all know that here is the sun let us say here is sun dear children around around the sun look at here around the sun so earth is rotating in a circular path let us say here okay but do you think that uh, at a different time so earth is going with a different speed once it is like you know uh, x km per hour next is the y km per hour after some time z km per hour it is not that so it is going in a uniform manner that we all know very well but dear children so as anyhow in a next session which we are going to learn about the forces which are acting on the earth when it is in motion dear children so there will be a centripetal force let us denote with the f1 centripetal force which is always acting towards the center whereas one more force centrifugal force centrifugal force so these both forces are equal in magnitude but in opposite direction but in a opposite direction so means what the net force will be zero as a net force will be zero definitely the number of forces which are acting on the earth they do not change its state of motion so now earth is said to be in dynamic equilibrium dynamic equilibrium why because the force acting on this body they are not changing its state of motion state of motion then the body is said to be in dynamic equilibrium so dear children 
in examination directly they may give this example and they will ask you so which comes under like either a static equilibrium or dynamic equilibrium it's a very very important so once again just let me tell you what is the static equilibrium dear children the number of forces acting on the, what the number of forces acting on the body still they do not change its state of rest then we can say that body is in static equilibrium if the number of forces acting on the body the body is going along a straight line path in a circular path whatever it may be if they do not change its state of motion then the body is said to be in dynamic equilibrium just copy it so the last topic uh, in this session i mean in this unit also is principle of moments so it's very 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 important principle of moments the last topic principle of moments principle of moments and teacher so let us take here is uh one beam like iron beam or wood whatever it may be and let us say it is a pivoted it is a pivoted at this point o at this point o and just think about the situation where on this uh, body which is a pivoted region the number of forces are acting on this number of forces are acting several forces are acting this body which is pivoted at this point o then what happens so it depends depends on that you know uh, what uh, depends on the magnitude of the forces and depends actual where they are acting I means that is a, the perpendicular distance either they may tend to uh, rotate in a clockwise direction or in a anti clockwise direction clockwise direction or in a anti clockwise direction so that how can we calculate the resultant uh, moment of force by doing the summation by do, by finding the algebraic sum of the clockwise moments of force and anti clockwise moments of force finally we can say whether it is rotating in a clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction so dear children for suppose here the force f1 is acting at a perpendicular distance of r1 from this pivot point whereas one more force f2 is acting at a perpendicular distance of r2 r2 so then what does this principle of moment says these children so it says that in equilibrium it's very very important in equilibrium in equilibrium in equilibrium dear children in equilibrium in equilibrium means what this beam whatever the beam which we have taken the rod it should not rotate either in a clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction it happens only when the algebraic sum of the clockwise moments of force should be equal to the algebraic sum of the anti clockwise moments of force so so according to principle of moments in equilibrium dear children so sum of clockwise moments of force equal to sum of anti clockwise moments of force anti clockwise moments of force so in this example it is f1 into r1 is equal to f2 into r2 so this what actually you also should write in exam which in exam if they may ask you state principle of moment so what you should write so according to principle of moments in equilibrium sum of the clockwise moments of force should be equal to the sum of the anti clockwise moments of force but dear children here especially in this unit dear children we are going to solve the numericals based on that uh, you know 1 meter rule and half meter rule when it is pivoted it's a very 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 important so dear children here one more thing here uh, we have to learn here in this of sometimes force f1 and f2 sometimes you know weights will be given weights w1 and w2 then in that case how can we write in that case also we can apply principle of moments and we can write like this W1 into R1 is equal to W2 into R2. Directly you cannot because W is nothing but the force only. And some other cases, dear children, even they don't give force, they don't give weight. Rather, they will give a mass. Here is M1 and here is M2. But still, don't get confused. Why here we know that W is equal to mg. W is equal to mg. So W1 is equal to m1g and W2 is equal to it will be. m2g so what can we write here m1g into r1 is equal to m2g into r2 so here g g gets cancelled so directly you can write it as a m1 into r1 is equal to m2 into r2 dear children these are the things which we are going to apply when you are solving the numericals okay dear children so this is what actually principle of moments so this is actually these are the topics which we discuss Uh, in this particular session so let us recall one second actually in this unit a dear children what we discussed 
in the first video in detail which we discuss the effects of force on a rigid body where it is pivoted and where it is free to move and after that we discussed about what is the moment of force and some applications after that we discussed about a couple and whereas in today's session we discuss especially uh, yeah couple we discuss then we discuss about equilibrium of bodies then we discuss principle of movement so these are the concepts which are there in a unit a of this first chapter in next session dear children we are going to solve the numericals very very important so in next session we will be discussing the numericals and as well as the exercise questions even theory questions also which we are going to cover okay dear children thank you so much all the very best